Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have something from Germany. This is German whiskey. It is not a single malt. It is a single grain and it is aged 18 years. Now this is something special. This is special because in Germany we have a lot of people who are distilling whiskey now but not a lot of people who were distilling it 20 years ago. And this is actually a boom that has happened in Germany in the last couple, maybe about 10 years or so. 1926, the great-grandfather of the now master distiller, Emanuel Grohl, um, his name was Richard Beller, he actually started gathering fruit on the um, orchards around the castle of Teck, and he started making schnapps. His son, Christian Grühl, had the idea of following in the father's footsteps. He took a trip to Scotland, was fairly excited about what was going on there, and he decided, hey, I think I could do that too. So he went back a second time, and he actually looked exactly how they were doing their single malt distillation. And he said, yep, I can do that. And so in the year 1989, almost 30 years ago, um, Christian Grühl actually started producing whiskey. Now this here was distilled on the 1st of February, 1989. About nine years later. I don't know what happened with all the whiskey before that, but it's apparently gone. This was bottled um, on Jan July 1st, um, 19, 2016. And it spent its first some however years, I don't know, I'm so sorry, um, in an ex-bourbon cask. Then it was moved to a cognac cask, mmm, and finally in a sherry cask. And a total of 318 bottles actually were bottled. This is a single cask. Whiskey base number 89839, 48.6% cask strength. And um, this goes for 160 euros. We're talking about 180 plus dollars. Wow. Um, the Grul, G-R-U-E-L, distillery in Schwabien, in Baden-Württemberg, by Stuttgart, in the southwest of Germany, has been around for four generations now. They have their own uh, malted barley and their own organic wheat that they grow and they basically use um, ex bourbon casks as well as some wine casks um, they have three different places where they store the whiskey two of them are above ground one of them is below ground because one of the main things germans love to do is keep the angel share down as low as possible in america kentucky they like to have, oh, look, there's more angel share. No problem. We're going to bottle it in four to five years anyways. Good. Let the angels take whatever they want. Over here in Germany, they say, oh, we want to be as efficient as possible. Therefore, we want to keep the angel share down below 2%. The nose. First of all, I get a lot of espresso. I actually get the grounds of coffee, coffee grounds. But I also get a nice, nice cognac moment for you in America, Brandy. And I do get a nice berry moment with the sherry. There's vanilla from the bourbon, and it's all just kind of constantly complementing each other. Now, this is not a single malt. It is not 100% malted barley. It is actually a single grain. And they use, I would say, about 20% um, malted barley and 80% wheat. So this is almost like a wheated um, whiskey. And they say here, unchilled filtered, cast strength edition, original Swabian Tucker whiskey. I mentioned before, they his, grand, his great-grandfather actually gathered the um, fruit from the orchards around the castle of Tech. And therefore, in the city of Owen, um, actually in German we say Oben, the W-E-N is actually pronounced Oben, um, there's a castle tech, and that's what that's named after. They have a, also they have a 10-year-old, they have also a port cask, 
And they also have a five-year-old, but the five-year-old is also a grain whiskey. Whoop, that's not, that's the wrong bottle, I'm sorry. So I was looking for the bottle here. Someplace I placed it here, who knows. All right, um, <laughs> I, I just showed a, a Glen Groin, Gloin 15-year-old. That's almost, uh, that's not the five-year-old uh, from Tecker. Now, um, on the nose, I would say that the burnt caramel, the espresso, the coffee grinds is a little bit too strong for me. I would have liked to have a little bit less of that and a little bit more of the cognac, a little bit more of the vanilla, a little bit more of the fruitiness of the sherry. So I'm going to try it. Mm. That bitterness disappears until the very end, where at the very end there's a little bit of the tannins, a little bit of the astringency comes in, but it's actually very sweet, a very nice, a very round, a very, very... I'm going to use the word coherent whiskey. Now it's 48.6%, which means cast strength. So I am actually going to do the, this is, it's a $180 bottle over here. And I'm just trying it and trying it and trying it. I think the sample alone was like $25, which is a pain in the butt. But I'm going to put a little bit of water in here. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit down to about 43%. And then I'm going to say it's a, Mm, much better. The fruitiness comes through a little bit more. Even the cognac is a little bit more present. I just love cognac finished whiskeys. Oh, by the way, the Teeling Revival 12 year old um, number five, the last one with cognac um, finish, absolutely recommendable, even though it's a pain in the butt with the price. Mm. Mm hmm. That water just makes it more complete, it brings it down to exactly where it should be. The alcohol is just a, a supporting role in the entire development um, of the, the whiskey. Those coffee grounds are basically the espresso, the cappuccino moment. Mocha, mo mo mocha is more or less um, suppressed, and that bourbon, vanilla, the the fruitiness of the sherry and that just wonderful uh, cognac, that sour grape moment is just coming through. It's very good. Wow. I'm going to give it a B minus. I'm almost too enthusiastic for a B minus. Let's give it a B. In my German video, I gave it a B minus and I kind of fought a little bit for that, but it's actually a very good whiskey. Um, it's a B. Wow. Yay. Now the value for money. Ooh. Now, um, this is a single cask. This is a rare 18 year old German whiskey. I can name literally three other companies that has a 18 year old German whiskey on the market. Everyone else is much, much younger. Um, this is a bourbon cognac sherry cask finish. And this is a fourth generation producer of spirits. And therefore, I'm going to say it's a C minus. It's a C minus for those of you that like to have expensive, unique things. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. This is something you might not even find in Germany. I found three sites online that sell it. That's it. And they're very, very hard to find those sites um 318 bottles when they're gone they're gone and therefore i'm going to say a c minus it's a good tasting whiskey really good and it's very well done yay and i would hope and expect and actually desire more and more german whiskey producers to actually make such a great whiskey now compared to a red breast 21 sorry it's going to lose Compared to a, w, a Weller 12 year old or anything else over here, it probably will lose. But compared to almost every other German whiskey I've ever had in my glass, this is actually very, very well done. Congratulations on that. So, Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. A solid B, a C minus for the value for money for those idiots that want to buy something which is um, 
almost one of a kind over here in Germany, and that would be this. Thank you for watching. A thumbs up, subscribe, tell others about this crazy American over here tasting whiskey you'll never, ever, ever see. I'm so sorry. Great YouTube concept. Videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. See you soon. Bye-bye.